Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Amnesty International halts work in India alleging witch hunt by Modi government. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to introduce anti-blockade bill to fight effects of US sanctions. Uruguay's former President Pepe Mujica announces retirement from electoral politics. Women march in Mexico City demanding legal right to abortion. And 15 people killed in separate incidents in Afghanistan. In our first story, human rights organization Amnesty International has shut down operations in India, alleging a witch hunt by the Narendra Modi government. The government of India had earlier frozen the bank accounts of the organization. Authorities have been pursuing Amnesty for two years for alleged money laundering since 2018. A number of raids have been carried out on its offices and homes of its executives. Amnesty has denied all allegations of its financial misconduct and said that it stood in full compliance with applicable Indian international laws. No charges have been filed against the organization. Amnesty claims that the Home Ministry of the Hindu Nationalist Narendra Modi government has been constantly harassing the organization and human rights activists. The organization feels that they are the receiving end of the Modi government's wrath due to several reports that were published by Amnesty that were critical of the government's human rights track record. Amnesty's withdrawal from India demonstrates the concerns raised by leftist groups and human rights organizations alike over rising authoritarian tendencies of the Hindu Nationalist government and the rising right-wing populism under Narendra Modi. Amnesty stands among a long list of dissidents, including students, lawyers and professors, who have faced crackdowns for criticizing the Modi government. In our next story on Sunday, Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro announced that he would be presenting an anti-blockade constitutional bill to the National Constituent Assembly. Maduro had earlier hinted about this initiative to fight the arbitrary sanctions by the US during a meeting of the Presidential Commission for the Control and Prevention of COVID-19. Addressing the public on television, Maduro stated that the bill is an anti-blockade bill that has been created and studied with the help of international experts. He added that Venezuela has to protect itself urgently against so many attacks and to shield its economy and to undertake a financial, social and economic recovery. The bill is expected to be approved after a national debate. After it becomes a law, it will be possible for Venezuela to implement a set of measures to overcome the harmful effects of the sanctions. Vice President Delcy Rodriguez stressed that Venezuela is living in a historical moment that cannot be postponed and that it's time to reinforce the Bolivarian state's legal capacities to defend itself from the blockade. The United States has applied severe sanctions to the oil, gold, mining and banking industries, as well as to companies, vessels and individuals who are linked in one way or another to Venezuela's government. She also stated that these sanctions are crimes against humanity and they have, been, they have brought the case before the International Criminal Court to denounce the US government for suffocating the commercial and financial sectors of the country. Washington-based think tank, the Center for Economic Policy and Research, had come out with a report in 2019 that claimed that 40,000 Venezuelans had lost their lives due to US sanctions on the country. In our next story on Sunday, Uruguay's former president, Jose Musica, announced that he would leave his place in the Senate and retire from electoral politics due to health issues. Jose served as Uruguay's president between 2010 and 15. He had earlier revealed that he had a chronic immune disease and that his difficulties to move anywhere and anytime would prevent him from being active in his duties as a senator and a political leader. In the mid-1960s, Mujica joined the National Liberation Movement to Pomaros. During this time, he was prisoner four times, faced brutal torture and spent 12 years in prison. In 1985, after the return of democracy to Uruguay, he created a movement of popular participation. The leftist leader was Minister of Agriculture from 2005 to 8 and later a senator. At the end of 2019, the Uruguayan people elected him as their president. Although Mujica has said that he will not be a candidate in next year's election, there is some speculation that he resigned from the Senate so he can run for president again. In our next story on Monday, hundreds of women marched on the streets of Mexico City demanding legal rights to abortion all across the country. This was on the occasion of International Safe Abortion Day. Protests were called by a number of feminist groups in the country such as Ciudad Feminista and others. Some of the protesters clashed with the police who were trying to stop them from marching. The women dressed in black and carrying green bandanas raised slogans demanding safe and legal right to abortion. They marched on the city's monument to the revolution towards Juarez to meet another group of protesters when they were stopped by the police. Abortion is illegal in most of, the cap most of the country. The capital, Mexico City, and the southern state of Oaxaca legalized abortion only last year. In the rest of the country, abortion is only allowed under certain circumstances such as pregnancy caused by rape. In the second week of September, some women groups in the country went on to occupy some of the government buildings in the capital. They temporarily converted one of those buildings into a shelter home for women victims of violence and femicide. The movement for the right to abortion and against rising cases of femicide in the country has picked up in recent years. Women groups have criticized President Andres Manuel López Obrador for his lackluster and socially conservative response to the demand of action against rising cases of femicide and other women-related issues in the country. The protesters accuse that the president has taken an idealistic and vague position, talking about the need for spiritual change in the country 
instead of taking any firm policy action against rising crimes against women. In our next story, on Tuesday, at least 14 civilians were killed in a roadside bomb blast in Kajran district in central Raikundi province of Afghanistan. Among those dead are seven women, five children and two men. In another incident on Tuesday, the insurgent Taliban attacked a security check post in Shri Tagab district of the northwestern Faryab province. The first attack was launched at the Parliamentary People's Uprising Forces checkpoint in the area, the in the area of Maimana, the capital of Faryab province, where security personnel were killed. Despite the ongoing intra-Afghan peace talks being held in the Qatari capital Doha that are deemed vital for the stability of Afghanistan, the violence in the country has persisted. This has undermined people's faith in the intra-Afghan dialogue. At least 130 people have been killed and over 100 wounded since the beginning of the peace talks. Last week, 57 personal, security personnel of the Afghan forces were killed in different clashes in various parts of the country. According to the Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission, at least 1,293 civilians have lost their lives in the country in 880 incidents of violence during the first three months of 2020. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,